All right, folks, right this way, take a trip through the time tunnel. Let's go to the turn of the century. You hear that, folks? That's the overture. The show is about to start. American Folk Life's celebration of the American tent shows. These are not people doing something they were told about. They were there, folks. Come on, come on. Right this way, let's see the Chautauqua. See Pappy Sherrill. See the Griffins in their great feats of legerdemain. Hear Doc Goodblood give you the lecture and the pitch from the medicine show wagon. Just a few seats left, folks. See a scene from one of the old melodramas, Tess of the Storm Country. Yes, ma'am, you can bring the little ones. Singing, entertainment, dancing, comedy, in the wholesome family style. Oh, you're gonna love it. The price is right, folks. It's absolutely free. Family entertainment by families for families. Nothing like it anywhere else in the world. The chance of a lifetime, folks. This is something you'll never have an opportunity to see again. You know, from about 1870 until 1930, the rural communities across this nation were served by a uniquely American form of traveling entertainment. That was the tent show. Troops of actors and actresses, musicians, dancers, magicians, and other entertainers got together under the canvas big tops and traveled from railroad whistle stop to crossroads village, bringing to the people a type of theater which combined elements of vaudeville, minstrelry, circus, and American folk culture. The form that they all presented ultimately reflected the folklore and popular culture of the region in which they were appearing. Now probably the most commonly thought of form of tent theater was what was called a repertoire show, known in the dark business jargon as tent rep shows. Out of the tent rep shows grew a particular character who came to be a favorite of rural theater goers, a fella called Toby. Now Toby was red haired, freckle faced and a country boy. His simple antics and humorous ways quickly made, him, made his way into the hearts of many of America's theater goers. We're fortunate today to have with us one fellow who worked the Toby Show Act as a Toby for almost 40 years. Dale Madden traveled with, oh, we have fans. Dale Madden traveled with the Madden Stillian players through Iowa, Wisconsin, and Minnesota. His wife did acting on stage and also did song and dance specialties. We're going to ask Toby to open the show for us. this morning. Well, I was right up there where the kids is having their play, playground. That's where I was. I was up there and they were showing me some new games they were playing. Oh, the games. Oh, it was terrific, Toby. Did they teach you any of the new games? Oh, yeah, yeah. All, all them games, drop the handkerchief and blind man's bluff. All oh, them games. they showed me how to play a wonderful game this morning. They did, the huh? name of it is King B. King B. That's a oh. funny kind of oh, game. Oh, yeah, right? but would you like to have me tell you yeah, about tell it? Yeah, tell me all about oh, it. Oh, it's just really exciting, Toby. Yeah. The name of the game is King B. King B, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, one person has to be the king. One person's yeah. got to be See, the king. See, he's a big old fat lazy thing. He doesn't do any work. The king bee don't do any work. No. no. Then the rest of the people, maybe me or whoever, has to go out into the fields and the meadows and they gather honey all day long. They get honey? They're the little working bees, you see. Is that uh -huh. right? Uh-huh. And they work all day long getting honey. My, 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 and my, And when my, they my, come my. back, all they have to do is go buzz, 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 all around old King Bee, and all he has to do is say, give it to me. And those poor little things have to give him all that honey they've worked so hard for. Yeah, but they have to pay for it. Don't have to pay nothing? Not one They, they get the honey for nothing? That's right. Oh, I like to you play see, that game. The, that fun, the fun of it is, Whoever's gonna be the king. Yeah, who's gonna be the king? Yeah. Be? That's you, see, uh, you see, that's the fun of it. Yeah, that's it, Because they don't do any work. Yeah, so don't that, do nothing. It's my it. game, yeah. and I'll be the king. Yeah. No, no, no. I want to be the king. Well, be. I'm not going to yeah, allow I, that. I, I, you they want, showed should, me the game. I should be the king. All right, all right, I'll give in. You yeah, can I, be the king. I'm going to be the king you're, bee. You're I no, get the honey. Huh? You're no selfish thing. It's my game, and I should be the king. I know, but I am the king bee. You get all the honey, and all I've got to do is say, give it to me. That's right. Okay, now you stand right here. 
And I'm going to go out and work my heart out getting honey. Yeah, you gotta work. Get all it out. day. Get a lot of honey. Okay. Yeah. Then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna buzz, 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 buzz all around. Yeah. Me. And all you have to do is say, give it to me. And then you give me the honey. All the honey. And it don't cost nothing. No. Oh, that's gonna okay, be a good thing. Right yeah. Buzz, 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 buzz. Here we go. Here we go to work. WPA in reverse. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, boy, I'm telling you, she she sounds like an, an old drone bee. Do you know that honey is worth a dollar and seventy nine cents for those black spots? I would get the honey. I get the honey. Oh, here they come. All the honey for nothing. Don't cost me nothing. Hey, hey, working bee, give it to me. <laughs> oh, oh, shut up. You wanted to be the working bee, the king bee, you know. Yeah, but you wasn't supposed to squirt water. Well, we have to play it two times, you know. You should laugh. Good. You're supposed to laugh. Go, going to play it another time? We're going to play it another time, Maybe then you can laugh. This time, yeah. No, well, you have to play it two times, you know. Yeah, got it, got to play it okay. two times. Okay, so I'll be the little working bee and, and, and go back out and get some more. You're going to be, you're going to be, oh, no, 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 I'm going to be the working bee. Well, I'll be the, I should be the working bee. Don't <laughs> Fair. That isn't fair. That isn't fair. You uh, wanted to be the king bee in the first place. Yeah, but I'm, we're going to change it around now. I'm going to be the working bees. Now, okay, okay. Now, I'm now, not afraid of you. Yeah, you understand. I go out and get all the honey. Yes. <laughs> this is going to be awful. This is going to be awful. I'm going to go out and get all the honey. I come back here, and you say, give it to me. Give it to me. You sure we're going to get it? I can tell you that much. Are you all set? Yes, I'm ready. <laughs> Most tent troops stayed from three nights to a week in a town. Well, this necessitated them traveling a whole lot. Now, originally, they traveled by horse and mule-drawn wagons. In later years, many of the shows began using trucks and, for the larger shows, trains. However, along the nation's waterways, the entrepreneurial directors of some shows decided there was a much easier way to go. They put their tent, when they took it down, onto a barge and simply went downriver floating with the tide or in many cases employing a small steamboat to push the barge. Well, over the years, some of these captains got tired of loading and unloading at every stop and began erecting the tent right on the barge. Well, from there, it was only a one simple step to the point where you actually built a permanent floating theater on the barge, pushed by a showboat, 
pushed by a steamboat rather, and thus the birth of the American showboat tradition. Now the sort of entertainment you found on the showboats was virtually identical to that found under the canvas big top. Just as was done on the tent rep companies by, the, by those troops, so it was done on the showboats by troops of actors, magicians, musicians, etc. We're fortunate to have with us today Ms. Betty Bryant. Betty Bryant was reared on the Bryant showboat, which traveled every year from the headwaters of the Allegheny, down the Ohio River, down the Mississippi, presenting plays and specialties just as was done under tent. She's going to be performing for us today two dances, both of which were learned on the showboat, and at least the first one was learned from her father, the buck dance. Let's have a hand, please, for Miss Betty Bryant. <laughs> Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. As uh, you've been told, this first dance that I'm going to do was taught to me by my father, and it is called A Buck and Wing. <laughs> show you a tired woman. <laughs> I'd like to show you a, an example of a dance that really came from the rivers. People used to take some of the old river bottom sand. When it was dry, they'd spread it out on cobblestones, a wooden spot, anything they could find. And they did what became known a shoe first, please. <laughs> what became known as a sand dance. Now, we have non-union help back here. So, another shoe, please. <laughs> I'll tell you when. <laughs> okay. One more. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, I'm very interested in this sand. We've had a dreadful time getting sand. And it has to be just so, and it has to be very dry. So one of the young volunteers today got this for me. I hesitate to say where, but I understand it's, is it out of the insect exhibit in the Museum of <laughs> Natural History? <laughs> I don't know, that seems sort of uh, disrespectful, but here goes. <laughs> And now we're going to pause a minute. We'll have to take a break while we clean off the stage.
That was Roberta Griffin, an apt stagehand who you'll see a little later on in the performance. You know, while the entertainment on board the showboats and uh, on the tent rep troops was based primarily in folk culture and in popular culture, the entertainment found under the Chautauqua tent was quite a bit different. Chautauquas were organized back in 1907 and tr actually traveled across the, United, the whole United States well into the 1930s. They organized out of central offices. Their purpose was to bring to rural communities a series of lectures, a series of recitations, uh, performances of classical music and classical acting. It was quite a bit different in terms of entertainment from the more folk-based types that we've seen up to this point. We're very fortunate to have with us today Ms. Anna Blair Miller. Anna Miller joined the Chautauqua circuit shortly after graduating from high school as a musician working with the Alexander Novelty Quartet. Now the Alexander Novelty Four performed a variety of semi-classical and popular numbers on everything from ocarinas to saws to saxophones. In addition to doing song and dance specialties, Anna Blair Miller also did costume numbers and some comedy monologues. We've asked her to do a song and recitation number for us today that she did back in the Chautauqua platform in the 1920s. I'd like to make one special note. The dress she is wearing for this costume number is the very same dress that she wore on stage with a Chautauqua tent. Let's have a big hand, if you please, for Ms. Anna Blair Miller. <laughs> Just an old fashioned garden, but it carried me back to that dear little shack in the land of long ago. I saw an old fashioned mercy getting old fashioned kisses. It seems so strange when Grandmama, some 50 years ago, upon returning from a dance or party, don't you know, when at the gate each lad would bid adieu to each fair maid, as a leaving he would surely sing a good night serenade. Now on occasions like this you would hear a song which nowadays would sound quite queer. Good night, ladies. Good night, ladies. Good night, ladies. We're going to leave you now. But what a difference. Nowadays, you really can't deny the fact that songs bear quite a change from days that have gone by. Of course you know this sort of thing is not quite out of date, uh, but on those sweet occasions, here's the song I heard of late. Uh, yes, sir, that's my baby. No, sir, I don't mean maybe. Yes, sir, that's my baby now. Ooh, but things like this could not occur when Grandma was a girl. Now, now the streetcars that they used to have uh, when Grandma was a girl are different from those we have in this time's busy world. A polite conductors on our streetcars would be something new. Conductors in the olden days were too good to be true. Uh, when Grandma was a girl, it is a fact that this is how conductors used to act. The next stop is Chatham Square. Change cars for City Hall. Uh, be careful, don't soil your skirt on that dirty step. Ah, uh, here's a lovely seat. Are you quite comfortable? Will you have a transfer? Uh, have I your permission to start the car? <laughs> ding, ding. But what a difference. 
nowadays, you really can't deny the fact that things bear quite a change from days that have gone by. For nowadays, whenever you desire to catch a car, this kind of treatment you will get no matter who you are. The next stop is for non -umptives. No, no transfer. Hurry up, step out. Look out there, you want to break your full neck, ding, ding. <laughs> but things like this could not occur when grandma was a girl. <laughs> I'm getting tired of our up-to-date ways, up-to-date plays. You see nowadays, and maybe you think I am awfully slow, cause I love the quaint old ways of long ago. Can't you bring back the olden love days, the golden love days? of long ago Can't you bring back all the old fashioned melodies mother and daddy used to know Can't you bring back the bashful missy the tender kisses by moonlight glow Oh I wish Like they loved in the sweet long ago. The sort of entertainment that we've looked at so far has been primarily white performers. However, in the, from the turn of the century well into the late 1940s, there existed, especially in the South, a distinct Afro-American tent touring tradition. A number of shows billing themselves under such names as Silas Green from New Orleans or the Florida Blossom Minstrels trooped under canvas, presenting fast-paced reviews of jazz bands, classic blues singers, tap and eccentric dancers, comedy teams such as Butterbeans and Susie, and choruses of dancing girls. We are very fortunate to have with us today a string band, a black string band, who performed under this sort of tent troupe, under this sort of tent, with the traveling minstrel shows and the larger Afro-American medicine shows, which were based, basically, on the format of the minstrel shows, but sold medicine instead of charging admission. C Howard Armstrong, Ted Bogan, and Elsie Armstrong have been playing together on and off since the 1930s and bring us a type of music which really combines many different forms. They've got a little bit of blues there, a little bit of jazz. I don't know what that type was. <laughs> a little bit of blues, a little bit of jazz, a lot of popular tradition, and some of the old white string band tradition. I think without further introduction, let's please have a warm welcome for Howard Armstrong, Ted Bogan, and Elsie Armstrong. Thank you very much. Our first selection, ladies and gentlemen, is You're Nobody to Somebody Love You. It's a pretty popular song. And then you're not so sure what you are or who you are then. You know, Socrates said over a thousand years ago to his prize pupil, Plato, he said, you know one thing, Plato? What is it, Soc? He said, you know, if you want love, if you want to do it, you got to get on to it. And if you can't get it, you have to quit it. So Mr. Bogan's going to tell you all about it. You're nobody till somebody loves you.
you know, but until you, somebody loves you, you're nobody until somebody kills. You may be king, you may possess the world and its gold, but gold won't bring you happiness when you're growing old. Me. The world is the same, you'll never change it, just as sure as the star shines above, you're nobody until somebody loves you, so find yourself somebody. Many people wonder where we are from, members of the group. But Don't I'm not tell it. I'm not ashamed to tell anybody where I'm from. You I'm from, be. I'm, I'm from South America, Tennessee. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to do you a little song from my most gracious homeland. It's a little swift number that calls, She's My Curly-Headed Baby. And I, oh, I said the wrong word. You see, in Tennessee, we don't say baby, we say baby, you see. So we're going to kick it over the hill for you. Bogan, I want you to step on it here. Right. She's mine. Curly-headed baby Used to sit on the daddy's knee She's my curly-headed baby She's from sunny Tennessee I have loved her since I met her More than any tongue can tell If she would leave me for another I can never say farewell Last night I dreamed my baby left me Yes she did Hurt me so bad I could not speak When I woke up this morning and found that she still loved me 
tears of joy roll down my cheeks as it is. She's my curly headed baby, yeah. She used to sit on the night of me. She's my curly headed baby. She's from sunny Tennessee. Often we worry a little bit about misrepresenting the tent show tradition by presenting too much song, dance, and comedy. We must remember that at least for the tent repertoire troops, this sort of specialty was done only between the acts of a play or in the evening concert. Now on a medicine show, this sort of act made up the entire show except for the pitches. Well, you know, there was a lot of dramatic material other than just the melodramas presented from the stage as well. We're going to present a dramatic piece now that was very, very popular back in the 1920s, 1930s, and into the 1940s. It's a dramatic reading being done by Lois Madden, Lois who you saw earlier as Toby's partner. It's called A Deck of Cards. Let's please have a big hand for Ms. Lois. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, with your kind permission, I should like to repeat to you a little story that was told me the other day. This is no inflection on any particular denomination and is not derogatory in the least. During this recent great war of ours upon the Tyrrhenian coast of Italy, a company of United States soldiers was marching through a little village. It was early in the morning and the soldiers were very tired. Now in the center of the village stood the church. The peasants were slowly gathering for their morning worship. The captain of our boys was notified and asked that if they cared to, they were more than welcome to attend the services. Whereupon our boys filed slowly into the church, become seated, and the services proceeded. It was noted by the captain that one of his men was displaying a deck of prayer after the services were concluded, the boy was brought before his commanding officer to give an account of why he displayed a deck of playing cards in the house of the Lord. When the boy was brought before his commanding officer, he tried to explain to him in this manner. Sir, I meant no harm. You see, whenever I look at the ace or the one spot, it tells me there is but one God, God Almighty. And when I look at the deuce or the two spot, I think of the Father and the Son. And when I look at the tray or the three spot, I think of the three great wise men who followed the star into Bethlehem. 
And when I look at this four spot, I think of the four great apostles, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And when I look at the five spot, I think of the five foolish virgins who burned their lamps. Three repented and were saved. Two were foolish and were turned back. And when I look at the six spot, it tells me that my Lord created the heavens and the earth in just six days. And when I look at the seventh spot, it tells me that he rested from his great works and that he hallowed that day. And when I look at the eighth spot, I think of the eight righteous people who were saved in the ark. There was Noah, his wife, their three sons, and their wives. And when I look at the ninth spot, I think of the ninety and nine who were safely gathered to the fold. And when I look at the ten spot, I think of the ten great commandments that was handed down by Moses and written on the tables of stone. And when I look at the jack or the knave, I think of the devil and all of his wicked works. And when I look at the queen, I think of the Virgin Mary, queen of heaven. And when I look at the king, it tells me there is but one king, the king of kings. And now, sir, when I count the spots on my cards, I find exactly 365, the exact amount of days in a year. There are 52 cards, the exact amount of weeks in a year. There are 12 face cards, the exact amount of months in a year. There are four different suits, the exact amount of weeks in a month. And there are 13 tricks, the exact amount of weeks in a quarter plus one. So you see, sir, my deck of cards serve me as my Bible, my prayer book, and my almanac. Thank you. The Depression in 1929 dealt a crippling blow to the entire tent show tradition. Most shows began to die soon thereafter. Chautauquas went first, Minstrel companies went shortly thereafter, and tent rep companies, there are still two of those operating, but most of them went in the 1950s. However, in the mid-30s, an entirely new form of tent theater developed. You know, this was a period when old-timey string band music was becoming increasingly commercial. Many of the bands were getting commercial sponsors and going on the radio doing daily live programming, especially in the southeastern United States and up and down the Appalachians. Well, many of these programs got dates, live gigs for the bands, and so they would go out doing the radio program in the day, often in the morning or afternoon, and traveling by car so they could do a program, a musical program at night. Eventually, many of the, of the bands began to get more and more popular. The Grand Ole Opry developed, the music began to change, and we got the development of country western and bluegrass styles. Now, it was during this period of time that many of the most popular bands, especially, like I said, in the Southeast, bands such as the Blue Sky Boys or Charlie and Bill Monroe, rented out canvas big tops and took out their own traveling tent shows. Now, they didn't present drama as the feature, but rather music as the feature, and interspersed sections of music with comedy specialties, many of them borrowed from the medicine show stage. We're fortunate to have with us today three musicians who worked under tent back yonder, back in the 1930s and 1940s. The Hired Hands from Columbia, South Carolina. Pappy Sherrill plays fiddle, Snuffy Jenkins plays banjo and washboard, and Harold Lucas does guitar. For this act, we've asked them to do first an old time song to give you a feel for this sort of specialty. And then we've asked Pappy to do a little something special. You know, a, a favorite novelty act in virtually all forms of tent theater was the trick instrumental work. Pappy is a superb trick fiddler, so he's going to, after the song, do some trick fiddling for us. Let's please give a big hand for the hired hands from South Carolina. <laughs>
you very much. Thank you. It's good to see all of you this afternoon. It's good to be here in Washington and seeing you have such a good, good time on the 4th of July weekend. We're glad to be part of it. We hope you'll enjoy what we do up on the stage. We have little Lukey Stoley on the guitar, and of course, Stuffy on the, D. Witt Jenkins on the banjo, and yours truly, Pappy on the fiddle. Uh, thank you, so that's made up. Thank you very much. We got to do something here, what you shouldn't do with a fiddle. And it's called trick fiddling, and there's a few little tricks to it that you shouldn't do. You might drop it, it would be bad. Stuffy says he can do anything on the banjo that I can do on the fiddle. <clears throat> you think he can do it, Lou? Well, we'll find out. Stuffy, you feel up to par, think you get with me? All right, here we go. We're going to do Pop the Weasel, and he's going to do a try just like I do on the fiddle. Let's go. from real early in the morning a lot of things takes place on the farm you know the first thing is feed the old mule if you got an old mule we call him old Maud and uh, old Maud makes a little sound in the morning something like this how do you go have a little loop oh you're going down the barnyard you're going to the barnyard now and imagine you're in the country and here we go you ready all right roll them up there you're gonna see how going down the barnyard I gotta get, you get to... <laughs> okay you ready all right let's get it there you go now, listen for the old mule. He's getting hungry, he needs a bundle of fodder under his tail, I mean his nose, and here's how he sounds. Ready? Oh, <laughs> oh baby. Well, about that time, you know, the little pigs has to be fed in the morning, so you have to take something to feed the old sow. She has about 15 or 20 little pigs, and they all get real hungry. So when you do, this is something like you'll hear around the, down to the hog pen. Here you go. That's a hungry pig, wasn't it? He must have been a little. Great, goodness alive. All right, then, you know, after you do that, the old rooster's about the first thing that wakes up early in the morning, and he'll crow right loud, and then before too long, the old hen will start cackling, and she's laid an egg. So here's how the old rooster will do early in the morning. Let's say. Yeah, that's so. Then the old hen finally will get off the nest, and you'll have an egg for breakfast like that. You got the eggs for breakfast. <laughs> okay. That's a few little things, you know. You add to that what I'm going to do now. This is a tune that not a lot of fiddle players play throughout the country and where we've been for many, many miles and over the United States and other places. And most fiddles, just about everyone you hear, have a little different technique of playing Listen to the Mockingbird. I have my own way of playing it to you for you, and I'm going to play it, and I hope you enjoy it. Ready, fellows? Grab hope. <laughs>
snap cycle. You know, we've talked a little bit about the melodrama and the, the acts, the three and four act plays that were really the basis of tent rep theater. What we'd like to do now is present one such act from one of those melodramas. Probably the very first play to be popularly associated with tent theater was Uncle Tom's Cabin. That play took the theatrical world by storm back in the 1850s. And by the 1860s and 70s, a number of small troops worked the Midwest under the canvas big top. Now, originally, these troops were taking a big chance, for that area had always, up to that point, been a real problem for the theater. The theater had never really been able to make its way into there because it was considered an evil force. Well, Uncle Tom's Cabin was billed as a moral and religious drama made the way in there and became a popular hit. It was soon followed by other melodramas, especially the temperance play, Ten Nights in a Bar Room. And this gave birth to a whole genre of theater. Now, what we're going to present today is one scene from one such of those melodramas called Tess of the Storm Country. The scene takes place about the turn of the century as Tess awaits on a stormy night in a lonely cabin, while her father, who has been falsely accused of murder in jail, is far away. The scene's going to be acted by Betty Bryant. Let's see, uh, who else is in this? <laughs> Roberta Griffin and Ed Doherty. Every day. 
I'll put a bottle of milk outside and you can take that. That's bully. Come on, little fella. Your Oliver Billy is ready. Oh, he walks with me and he talks with me. I don't know. Just stay over there. Stay over there. Don't say nothing. Come on in. I couldn't wait to tell you the news. I found a lawyer at home and he's willing to take your father's case. so nice to see you, sister. But this is a queer place for us to meet. Well, you see, I, well, I was on my way home and I, I... Uh, you see, the what? folks that, uh, she was visiting, uh, they was bringing her home in the sleigh and the storm come up and the automobile he turned over oh, and, uh, course, she was... You, we need to take you home at once. Well, I'll come back and see you soon. I'll be here all the time. I'll see you tomorrow, and we'll get your father free. And you will help me with the mission, won't you? You bet. Bless you. <laughs> A child? I thought you lived here alone. Whose child is it? Tell me, whose child is it? It is yours! Ben Lutz told me I came between you. Oh, God. Frederick. And you, the girl I trusted. I envied your faith. And you, with a baby. Do you deny this baby? I don't deny nothing. I don't care what you folks think of us. You swells is bigger thieves than us squatters, and you're worse liars, too. And you're, and you're mean, and you're hard-hearted, and... Oh, go on and get away from here. Let me take care of this baby. Tell me, who is the father? None of your damn business. <laughs> A number of the bits and comedy sketches that were performed between acts such as this and in the concerts of the tent reps programs and on the med show stage were traditional, found across the nation, performed by different troops. When an actor joined a troupe or joined a med show, he was expected to know certain singles, doubles, bits, and what were called afterpieces, longer, often, well, longer one act plays that would stretch from 25 to sometimes 45 minutes. These were the sort of things that were in the showbiz repertoire. Well, we have with us today two actors, well, an actor and an actress, who had never met before last week's program. Getting together, they realized both had worked on med shows and both had learned virtually the same bits, although working in entirely different areas of the country. Lois Stillian, we've seen already, worked in the Midwest. Greasy Medlin was a comic on the medicine show stage back in the Southeast having joined a medicine show when he was a teenager and working well into the late 1930s. They've worked up a special bit for us today, so let's give them a big hand. Greasy Medlin and Lois Stillian. <laughs> I know you too. I, I ha well, I haven't seen you in a long time. All right, I know. Your doctor, your, your papa's a doctor. Why, man. of course my father was Sh a doctor. Sure is a doctor. He saved my life one did time. He? I know him. Huh? How did he save your life? I sent for him and he never come. Oh, now, that isn't on. nice for you to say now, Breezy. He was a good doctor. My man. my father was uh, was a very famous doctor. I, I, he he became a very famous doctor. He did? Yes, he did. What did he do to be so famous? Well, I'll famous? tell you what he did. <laughs> what did he do? He proved to the world proved that to the world. whiskey killed more men than bullets. No! He proved that whiskey killed more men than That's bullets. That's right. He proved it to them. Who hadn't rather be full of whiskey and bullets? I had. Oh, here. Come on. Let me, let me tell you. Uh, let me show you how he did it. How did he do it? He took a glass of water. Took a glass of water. Clear water. Clear water. <laughs> and then he took another glass uh -huh. of whiskey. 
Tough guys of whiskey. Pure whiskey. And drunk the whiskey. No, he didn't drink the whiskey. Son of a gun, all been shot. He went out and he found himself <laughs> a nice, clean, wiggly, fresh worm. Got himself a worm? Yes. He dropped that little old wiggly worm right in that glass of water. Son of a gun, drowned in worms. No, no, no. That little worm was the happiest little thing you ever did. <laughs> Just wiggled and twisted yeah. and everything. Ah, he was. Then, wait a minute now. Uh-huh. He reached in that glass of water and he drug it out. It was just a wiggling and a wiggling and a wiggling. And he dropped it in that glass of whiskey. Died instantly. No, oh, hold it, hold it. That whiskey didn't kill that one. It, it certainly did. It you certainly didn't did. say that whiskey. He put it in the water and didn't bother. That's right. Then he put it over there in the whiskey and the it killed the worm. Killed him dead on a doornail. Lady, you sure that uh, that whiskey killed them worms? I'm sure. Sure, I'm sure. Well, if you sure of it, I thank you. I thank you from the bottom of my heart. I'm thanking you. Yeah, yeah. Why? I know what they're doing in the case of my kind. Now I've been suffering with worms for the last 40 years. Oh, crazy, crazy. Come here. You, you knew my mother, too, didn't you? I sure I know your mama. Uh, you you know. had a good mama. You bet oh, I had Lord it. Did have a good mama. Oh, she was a she, dandy. Yeah, she's stingy yeah. as a devil, though. Uh, what? Well, hold it. She was I mean, not she's stingy. Kinda close. She well, she might have been a little close, but she wasn't stingy. I know some. Well, I don't know where she's stingy now, but when, uh, when World War II was going on, yeah. I was walking right down the street in front of your old mama's door. Yes. There she sat on the front porch, a darning sock. Well, of course, she was always busy. You yes, didn't catch my mother right sitting there. around. I got out on my knees in the front yard and started eating the grass yeah. out in the front yard. Mm-hmm. You know what your mama said? Well, sure I know what she said. Yeah. She uh-huh. said, Greasy, you just pack yourself around that house to the back door, and I'll give you a great big plate of food. That's what my what? mama said. <laughs> She said, come around to the back garden. The grass is high. I'll get to oh, it Oh, she did not. She I did not. I know what she told me. Well. Did... I went on around there, though, where she was. And yeah. Got out on my knees and started eating old grass out of the yard. She got sorry for me. Yeah. Gone out there and gave me big old pancakes about that big. Oh, she made pancakes, big ones, didn't she? They yeah. was big ones. All right. So pop out hard every time I'd bite down on my teeth and rattle like a set of dice or a tin oh, tub. did not. I bet you ain't I, ever one of them, yeah, though. That was a rough pan well, you bet. Did you, you know... Go you ahead. got a good did, brother. You sure? Yeah. Did you know my brother? Yeah, hey, yeah, I know. I remember this know. time. Yes, yeah. you bet. I didn't know that you remembered my brother. Oh, yeah, he's, he's a good old he, boy. You know, he become very famous, too, you know. He did? Yes, he came He didn't from, drown worms, though. No, he went to the war. He went to the war? Yes, he, he went to the war. Man. And he came home, a live man lived to tell it. Uh, what did he do over there? Well, I'll tell you what. Mama didn't want him to go. Oh, I know she You know, didn't. Uh, yeah. he, he was the only baby boy she had. Uh, oh, she's only And, and she boy. didn't want him to go. I so before play. before he went, she took one of those little tin tie pictures, you know, those little frames. Little like, tin types she used to make. Yeah, yeah. Make pictures on. I know what they were. You know what she did with it? What'd she do? She pinned it right square smacky dab across his heart. <laughs> And she pinned it on his heart. I yeah. was so And he good. went to the service with that pinned on his heart. Yeah, he did. And he went to war. Went to war? Yes. What? He was in the thickest of the battle. The Thick- bullets was flying here, the bullets was flying there, and one of them hit him right yeah. smack dab there. And it didn't kill him either. He lived to tell it. He's a dead man. He no. lived to tell it. Yes, he lived to tell it. He could yeah, mean your brother, like you said, your brother got hit in the heart and he lived to tell that's it. That's so... He that's... didn't get hit in the heart. He got hit in that tin time. Oh, well, whatever. Oh, got hit whatever. At. I was in that war. T- I was in the war, too. I didn't know you come up missing no, for yes, several I, years. Yeah. But I didn't know where you were. I, I, oh, yeah, I was in I was in the full of beans. Full of prunes. Where? Full of prunes. Full oh, of beans. you mean the Philippines. Yeah, that's why. I was That's where you... Yeah. Tell me about it. I was over there where the bullets are the thickest. <laughs> they were? Where were you? On the ammunition wagon. <laughs> That's what I figured, huh? Tell me about it. Oh, that. I was over there and the bullets are flying everywhere. Bullets are going this way, bullets are going this way, bullets are going this way, bombs going this way, mean a couple of bombs going out of the way. Oh. That's bobbing all around. So a great big bullet hit me right in the stomach. But I still live to tell the tale. Oh, oh no, <laughs> Breezy, you're putting me on. And no, I still live to tell the how, tale. How, how, how? How could a bullet hit you in the stomach and you live to tell it? Uh, yeah, you know what saved my life? What saved your life? One of your mama's pancakes. Oh! We 
we've mentioned from the stage a number of times, the medicine show and the med show pitch. We're going to bring to you now Dr. Fred Foster Bloodgood, one of the last of the old medicine show pitchmen. Now, Fred joined with a medicine show back in the 1920s, and he still does the pitch now, just as he did from that lit platform and under the med show tent back years ago. We're going to now present, and we ask a big hand for the med show doctor superior, Dr. Fred Foster Bloodgood. Thank you, thank you ladies and gentlemen, very much and good afternoon. As Mr. Hinson has told you, I'm going to do the exact same pitch as I did in 1928, with one exception, there won't be any sale. I hope you'll enjoy it as much as I will enjoy doing it for you. I would say one more thing also, and that is the fact that it's conceivably possible that this could be one of the last and final remaining medicine show pitches that the world will ever know. Because truly, on the last and final day of the Folklife Festival, when the fiddles and guitars of those people fade into the night air, so also the phenomenon of the old time traveling medicine show will also fade forever, down the valley of a thousand yesterdays. But for some of us, when the last grand cataclysm of the Earth's disintegration resounds with thunderous cacophony as bursting stars and blazing fragments go hissing into uncharted stratosphere, the medicine show for some of us will live in our hearts forever. Now may I say one more, just a little thing here. Also, I'd like to have you know that it was a different era in those days. That which was absolutely dead serious in a medicine show lecture, hopefully will prove to be entertaining or even mildly amusing to you today. And now for the pitch. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Clifton Comedy Company. We've come to your city to stay one week, bringing you clean, moral, refined entertainment, which is absolutely free. We bring with us a company of 14 performers, each and every one an artist in his or her line. But more than that, they're all ladies and gentlemen and can conduct themselves as such. In other words, there'll be nothing seen, heard, said or done to mar the impunity or injure the propriety in any way, shape, form, or manner of the most fastidious little lady in the community. Now, throughout the week, you're going to hear people calling me doctor. Actually, I'm not a doctor. I did attend Northwestern for two years, but I'm not licensed. I'm not allowed to make calls. Soon after that, I decided I didn't want to go out and hang out a shingle, but I would prefer to travel down the highways and into the byways in an attempt to allay the sickness and suffering that mankind is heir to, and that's all I've done. But friends, if you could look as I do upon that vast multitude of people, people that I've taken off from canes, off from crutches, out of the sick bed, you might say snatched off the operating table with the use of that tonic, you wouldn't blame me for preaching. Now we were sent here by the Finley Medicine Company, 4151 Olive Street, St. Louis, Missouri, for the express purpose of introducing and advertising their products. Now we have just two products, the instant liniment and the hospital tonic. The hospital tonic is a harmless preparation consisting of roots, herbs, leaves, gums, barks, berries, and blossoms, including ginseng root, diana emily, cinco, sulfameda berries, iron phosphate, cajun, mandrake, Canadian snake root, bitter apple, Chinese dragon flower, and chemical oil. And now you're going to say, well, will it cure everything? And ladies and gentlemen, if I were to tell you we had a cure-all, I would be lying to you, and I am not going to lie to you. Our product is good for just three things and three things only. That's the stomach, the liver, the kidneys, the three, <laughs> the three principal blood-making organs or any disease arising therefrom, such as sour stomach, indigestion, constipation, female weaknesses, rheumatism, catarrh. Any disease arising from a disorderly stomach, impure liver, deranged kidneys, with the exception of Bright's disease. And ladies and gentlemen, if your kidney complaint has reached that stage, Please don't you buy a bottle because it wouldn't do you any more good than that much rainwater, and I would much, much rather you wouldn't have it. Now really that's all I know of those three things, the stomach, the liver, the kidneys. For example, I have a car sitting out in back, it's a Buick, and as long as it'll run I can drive it. But if it stops, I don't get out and try to fix it, I merely hail the first passing motorist and he may turn over just a wire, a nut, or a bolt, and I'll put my foot on the starter and it'll go along all right. Now, if Mr. Buick had made that car, with stomach, liver, and kidneys, then I could have fixed it. He didn't. I don't know anything about it, and I don't want to know anything about it. Now, some people say, well, I don't see how you sleep at night. You lie, you steal, and you swear, and that really is true, I suppose I do. 
I lie on my bed at night, I think of all the good I've done throughout the day. I, I steal, I steal away from bad company, have the quiet thoughts to myself, and I swear, I swear that's the greatest tonic ever offered on the market. Thank you. Very nice. <laughs> now, ladies and gentlemen, people brag about the fact that they haven't taken a dose of medicine for five years or ten years, and you know if a person would ever make a remark like that, well, they'd be ashamed of it, really. Let me paint you a word picture very briefly that the smallest boy or girl in my audience can understand. Those of you that keep house, you have sitting at your back door what we call a slop bucket or a garbage can. And when you get through with breakfast, you scrape those dishes into that garbage can. You do the same thing with lunch. Comes dinner, you do the very same thing. And when the bucket gets full, I don't care what you do with it. Take it out, feed it to the pigs, bury it. But just do this. Keep that bucket in that capacity for one week's time. Then I want you to see the condition that it is in. See the filth that adheres to the side. Smell the stench that comes from it and stop and think. Think, ladies and gentlemen. I've been putting that same food into my stomach not for a day, a week a month, a year, but for five years or ten years, and I've never cleaned it out. And I will guarantee, ladies and gentlemen, that the very first dose will bring from your body double handfuls of filth, slime, mucus, corruption, fecal matter, maggots, and even worms. Now, not very long ago, we asked the Finley Medicine Company to put one more ingredient into the product, something that would pass a tapeworm, head and all. And I'm very proud to say that that condition now does exist. I have several specimens back there in my office. One particular that I think of is, is one that belonged to a brakeman on the Baltimore and Ohio Railroad, a Mr. S a Mr. Uh, Sanger, Texas it was. On Monday night, he got a bottle of medicine. On Friday, he came down with that in a tin can, and I washed it and measured it, and it's a tapeworm that measures over 16 feet in length. It, I have Mr. Adams' sworn statement back in my trunk that he used no other medicine but the hospital tonic and the pass of the worm. Now, there's only one thing more, and then I'm all through. One thing that I think makes that product stand head and shoulders above any other product on the market, and yet, friends, I can't say much about it before a mixed audience of ladies and gentlemen. But I will say this, if there is a man within the hearing of my voice that goes to his home tonight and sees that poor wife, sister, mother sitting there with her head tied up and you say, what's the matter, Mary? And she says, nothing, nothing at all, John. Don't you believe there's nothing the matter? There is something, something she's not going to confide in you. You know the disposition of a woman, the majority of them will drag themselves around as long as they can keep going. And finally, finally they break down and then you have an invalid to take care of the balance of your days. Friends, I talk to you like I would my own mother, my own folks in my own home. And if I thought it'd do any good, I'd get down on this platform on my knees and I would beg you to take that woman home a bottle of tonic. Oh, friends, if you've got a woman like that at home and you see she's on the toboggan, on the downhill path, you want to bring the roses back to her cheeks, make her step, pick up, make her feel like she should again, you'll take my advice and take her home a bottle of that tonic. That's all I'm going to say. The price, the price is so low you cannot afford to miss it. It's a dollar a bottle, and with every bottle you receive 100 votes for the most popular lady or baby in the community. I'm only going to have the agents pass among you just once. If you folks seated there will just raise your hand, and those in the cars, if you'll just turn on your lights, I'll be glad to wait on you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I thank you. Thank you very much. One of the most common specialties found between acts on the tent rep troops and the tent rep concert and on the medicine show stage was that of magic. Now I'm not talking about the small sleight of hand illusions that were with which we're most familiar. Not the stage magic you see in television or in nightclubs, but rather the large illusions, the sort of things you would have seen from Houdini or the great Thurston. Illusions such as sawing a body in half, floating a lady, or perhaps cutting off somebody's arm, only to have it reappear magically a short while thereafter. From the turn of the century, well into the, well, I'd say actually up until the start of the Second World War, there were a number of magicians who took their families on the road under canvas big tops, presenting nothing but a magic show. Magic was the feature, 
and some of the small bits and doubles, a little bit of comedy, perhaps a little bit of singing and dancing, was put between the large illusions. But the show itself was primarily for magic. We're very fortunate to have with us today two superb mu magicians of the old school who do the large scale magic. Ken and Roberta Griffin have been performing since the 1940s, doing much of their work under the canvas big top. They're going to perform for us today, doing one of the favorite of the old time illusions, the floating lady. They'll be assisted by Ed Darty, a magician in his own right. Let's please give a hand for the three of them. Ken and Roberta Griffith and Ed Darty. <laughs> This, this afternoon, I would like to show you a lesson as taught by the wise old medicine men to the younger members of my tribe. And it goes like this. One time, two men became involved in a dispute over a quantity of grain. Rice, each claiming the grain for his own. So they took the dispute to the wise old medicine man. He said, I have two containers here. Place the grain within one of these containers. And so they did, like this. Taking the sacred medicine board, he carefully leveled the grain off, placed the other container on top, and went through a mystic ceremony like that. And the grain had doubled, giving each man an equal share. Now, one man was selfish. He was not satisfied with his share of the grain and asked that his again be placed in the container and doubled. So once more, carefully leveling off the first man's share, he placed the two containers together, went through a little different ceremony this time, and gave the selfish man his just reward. They tell a story in ancient Persia of a magician of long ago whose power was so great that he could cause the maiden's body to become light. Even, even as a feather and lies suspended in thin air. Ladies and gentlemen, the mystery of the floating princess.
going to close the show with a one-act short farcical skit. It's called a bit. It's the sort of thing you would have seen on the Med Show stage and in the tent rep concerts. These sort of bits were usually built around a single gag, were, were performed by performers in many, many genres of tent theater, and were traditional, just as the double that was done earlier. They were known by performers such that anyone who joined a troupe was expected to be able to fit right in. It's going to be performed for us by Snuffy Jenkins, Greasy Medlin, and Pappy Sherrill. It's an old bit called Niagara Falls. Let's give them a hand, please. <laughs> Friends, I, I want to talk to you just for a brief moment to uh, hear tell you about something that happened to me a few days ago. And c frankly, it didn't make me happy at all what it turned out to be. A friend of mine came up to me and says, uh, Pappy, I'm going to take you on a vacation. Expensive paid. I'm going to take you on a real nice trip you'll never forget as long as you live. I said, well, that's great. It's mighty nice of you. I said, where are you going to take me? He said, I'm going to take you to Niagara Falls. I said, Niagara Falls is a place I've always wanted to go. I certainly, I, I know I will enjoy the trip and have a nice time. He said, but first of all, I'm going to have to tell you, you're going to have to use your imagination just a little bit. I said, what do you mean by that? He said, well, get your mind on Niagara Falls and keep it there, and you will f feel the whole effects of Niagara Falls when I'm through with you. First of all, he brought out this little thing here like you see in my hand, which is to you like a funnel. He called it a radio funnel. I said, to me, it looked like just a plain old funnel. He said, no, this is the funnel you'll use to go to Niagara Falls. You'll hear the, the, the water going over the falls. You'll hear the, feel the mist. You'll feel the cool breeze. And what he did, he put the thing in front of my pants here. And when I was looking, he had my mind off on something else. He said, watch the fly on the wall so forth. And he poured my britches full of water. And so you know how I felt. I didn't like it at all. And then he just had a big time laughing over the trick. And so he said, I'll tell you what you do. You just go ahead and... Uh, Take this as a lot of fun and get it on somebody that you know uh, that will come along sometime you will meet and you get your fun back on you, back on the man that you like to get it on. So I said, well, I'll do it. So we all were friends and went on about our way. Uh, oh, here's, yeah, I hear it all this way. Here I, did, I, did, I got a cow just as fine as silk. She done learn how to shimmy. Now she's giving buttermilk. <laughs> Hello, Green. How you doing? Yeah, man, feeling good. How you it's doing? It's nice to see you out here. I, I don't know anyone I'd rather see than you. Yeah, I'm just messing around, going on with you on the back over on this side. What you been doing, Greasy? I ain't been doing nothing, and I got Snuffy hauling it off from me. Well, I've got a big old heart today, Greasy. Yeah, you have. I've got a big heart yeah. today. You know what? I well, want to do I want to do something real great for a friend. You're going to do something for who? I want to do something real great for a friend. For a friend, oh. I want to take you on a vacation. How would well, you like that? that? I, I, me on a vacation? I want to take you on a vacation. Something I'm, done going wrong with your head, buddy. No, nothing wrong with my head whatsoever. I You're going to take me. I How much you going to cost? Won't cost you one red cent. Ain't going to cost nothing. Won't cost you anything on the you, vacation. <laughs> you know where I'm going to take you? No, where are you going to take I'm going to take you to Niagara Falls. Uh, Niagara Falls? Yes, sir. No, it ain't gonna cost me nothing. Not one cent. Greasy, I this. Oh, something done. Flew loose in your head. All right, Greasy, now listen real close. You're gonna listen. You're gonna have to concentrate. I, uh, I do. Yes, you will. I'm good. I don't mind doing that. All right, <laughs> you're gonna have to really imagine and put your mind on Niagara Falls and keep it there because it's gonna be an imagination trip. Is that what it's gonna be? It's gonna be an imagination trip, Greasy. No, no, and I'm what good. what you do now is get your mind on the Niagara Falls, and when you do, I'm gonna take you on an imagination trip and you'll feel no. a good cool breeze. <laughs> you'll feel the mist of the water and you'll yeah. hear the waterfall and everything. And I'll see the lovers love making. You see the love, love making. Everything I'll see it all. It'll all be there in Niagara Falls. Uh, let's go. All right. <laughs> do you see this little thing here? <laughs> yeah. Uh oh. You done started making liquor again. No, no, no. No, this year, Greasy, is what you're going to have to use to go, on Ni to, go to Niagara Falls. This is I'm going to have to use that. This is a radio funnel. I don't care if it was a radio funnel. A radio funnel, and if you put this thing... There ain't nothing but old funnel you pull stuff through. This is an ordinary. It, it, it's a, listen, I want you to listen real closely. You'll hear the music. Listen, music? you hear the falls of Niagara yeah, Falls. Fall. Listen. I, I, listen. Yeah, I don't hear yeah, Don't you hear it? Isn't that pretty? I do hear something. That's Niagara Falls, Greasy. Is that what that was? All right, now just remember, uh -uh, you've I'm got to concentrate, but first you have to do this. Uh -huh. You have to put this, <laughs> put this in your brain. 
Man don't never do that. Why? Why? We should not down That's, our bridges like that. Where you got to drive up there, so you got to yeah, get that. Yeah, you ain't driving up that, slamming up down my bridge. Well, I praise you. You know what I've said at first? No, yeah, yeah. You're gonna have to concentrate. Do you see yeah. that? Do you see that fly out there on that little red sign? Uh, uh, see that fly? Do I don't see him, but I know he's out there. How you know he's out there? I hear him walking. All right. <laughs> You keep your mind on that fly now oh, and I watch got, that fly. Yeah, I got it on. Put your little funnel here where I told yeah. you. Oh, oh, I got. Yeah, that's your I radio funnel. Oh, I'm gonna drive. Later. You can drive. Yes, mm. you can drive. That, that's the radio I, funnel. Now. I always didn't want to drive. Aren't you ready to start, start the trip? Right? I'm ready to start any time you get ready, buddy. Keep, keep your eye on the fly. Okay? I got my eye keep on the fly. I got, I got the eye on. The, I, you better hurry up. I see another fly coming up there. That's one of these here. Do you imagine? Do you feel the breeze? Yeah, I feel the breeze. Do yeah. you feel the mist? I don't feel a cotton. You don't feel down. anything. You feel the cool air? I, I ain't feel no cool oh, air yet. I'm well, ready to go, though. All right, you got to feel the breeze first. I mean the mist. It's I feel be the really mist. It's really fine. No! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> That's a low-down trick I've ever seen anybody do. Breezy, I know how you feel. <laughs> you don't know how I feel. I feel all good. I know mm. how you feel. <laughs> <laughs> Greasy, I want to tell you a little something. This same thing was pouring. Anybody that do that, they pouring water in people's britches like that. <laughs> Greasy, listen, now, listen I, I, I know you feel bad about feel it. feel bad about it. I had the same thing pulled on me. <laughs> it was pulled on me. You I mean, mean I can pull that in anybody's britches? You can get that on a friend of yours and have the fun out of it just like I did. Now, pull so, the bridge. No, no, you don't put it in mine. Well, I I it was put in mine one time before. I know I've been there. You mean all I got to do is just walk around and pull and beat No, 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 just somebody that you really know real close to you, a friend oh, of yours. Yeah, and close, red, man, you can really get, you can really <laughs> let him have it. Don't I don't care if he is anymore. Just remember how to tell him the story at Niagara Falls when you I, see him. I got to tell him the story to keep his fly on the eye. Fly on the board. I'm well, I'm putting to do that. Somebody will, somebody will come around one day shortly. And you, oh, buddy, I don't mind doing that. Well, you got plenty of water. Yeah, plenty of water. Yeah, I got plenty of water. I can do that. Hello, Snapchat. I'll agree with you. Having a big time. Look at that. Yeah. <laughs> Lord, look, walked up right under my nose. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, that's nice. Yeah, having a good time out yeah. here. Yeah, boy. Yeah. I'm having one now. Tell a story. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I got a story I got to tell you. <laughs> All right, let's hear it. Oh. I'm going to pour water no, in the no, bridge. No, no, no. Tell him this. Nah, story. I got the. I, oh, I, I'm going to tell him I got the. Thing Take on the him road. on the trip, Niagara Falls yeah. vacation. Yeah, I, I ain't supposed to pour it now yet. Yes, uh, yeah. I'm going, I mean, Tell him about the vacation. Oh, yeah. Uh, you ever been on a vacation? No. Ain't you not, ain't? never been nowhere. But you ain't never been nowhere. <laughs> yeah, I can fall. You ain't been nowhere. Go get that water. No, 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 no. Huh? Tell him a story. Take him to the fall. You don't need to know nothing take about water him, in his bridges. Take, no. Tell him a story. Take yeah. him to Niagara Falls. Look at it, son. Uh -huh. I'm going to have to take you to Niagara Falls. <laughs> well, that's good. I'm ready to go. Yeah, that's nice. I'll carry you up there where all them lovers is, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, where well, you can see the mist of the waves yeah. and all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Breeze. See the water pouring down your bridges. I've I mean, heard of it. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> over the fall. Uh -huh. You know, yeah. going over the fall. Uh -huh. yeah. That's it. Yeah, going yeah. out. Tell you know what that is, don't you? Yeah, that's a bootlegging funnel. That's what it is. No, no, no. That ain't no bootlegging funnel. Radio. Oh, that's yeah. a radio funnel, buddy. Oh, uh, radio funnel? Yeah, that's a radio funnel. <laughs> nah, yeah, that ain't, yeah. ain't, ain't no hurt. That's something we're going to need. I sent some radio funnel. Yeah, does, Get the water and let's pull in his britches. No, no, no. Tell him, tell him about that. I don't mess with him no longer. He's got to concentrate. He's got to concentrate. Yeah, yeah. Imagination. Look here, son. Yeah. The first thing you got to do. Yeah. You got to constipate. No, yeah. no, no. Concentrate. I that's got what I what? told him. Tell him. Uh, uh, you see that fly out yonder on that red sign out yonder? I see him. I see him, yeah. Uh, you don't see no fly out there. I see yeah, that fly it's right out yonder on that red sign. You see him? You sure there's a fly out there? Yeah, there's a fly out there. Yeah, fly sure out there. there. Well, I'm bigger fool as you are. I see him too, man. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah it. you do. Yeah. He you sees a fly. That's all right. Keep his mind. Get his mind on the fly. Well, get me a bucket of water. Got, he shut up. I got the water. You got the water. Yeah. yeah. Look at that. Uh-huh. Yeah. What you got to do is keep your eye on that fly. Keep my eye on the yeah, fly. Yeah, and get the water away. No, and, I, I, and I'm going to put this, uh, you got, uh, you got, first thing you got to do is put this in oh, your bridge. No, you, no, you ain't putting that thing in my bridges, boy. You, how you think I'm going to pour the water in there? <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, uh, well, you got to drive. Oh, got to drive. Yeah, yeah. you know, you, you got to have a steering wheel, you know. Yeah. Well, uh, and, and I'm going to ride in the back seat. <laughs> Okay. Put a bucket of water. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> concentrate. concentrate. Yeah. 
Now, what you got the constable care for? You got yeah. to do what he said do. Yeah. Look at that fly, John. Look at the fly. I got my eye on the fly. All right. You got your eye on the fly? Oh, yeah. Let's go. <laughs> I'm ready to go. Man, that ain't enough water. Oh, I got more. Well, get a bucket full. I will. Look at this. Uh-huh. <laughs> fly. Watch it. I swear I hate to do that. <laughs> He looks so pitiful. I know it. Look at it, look at it. See, see how it's Go ahead, go ahead. I'm going to drown in someone's skinnies oh, otherwise. Morning. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. You think you is? Yeah. Yes, he's ready. He's ready. Yeah. Whoa, whoa. There you come, buddy. Right. You're going to feel the mist of the waves and the uh, dampness coming down you. I mean, it runs all over you. Let's go and get it over with. You him ready? Yeah. Here it comes. Ready. Give it to Add him. Add the water in going down <laughs> It's all going on. It's all gone. Yeah. It's all. <laughs> it's leaked out somewhere. Get a bucket back there, boy. Get a hose pipe. Maybe there wasn't enough water there. Yeah. How long have I got to watch that fly? Keep I, fly. You, got, you got to watch it till you feel the wave. Well, you, you, you ready? Yeah, I've been waiting. Well. You will ask what I've been doing. I ain't felt nothing yet. Uh, Darn it, that son of a gun ain't paralyzed. <laughs> you don't feel... Don't we get another one? Get one more, buddy. <laughs> I swear. Ain't no more. Yeah. Hey, hey, you just well, look, look you down down there. You You ready? Pour to him. This is getting mud. I just love to do this. I just tried. I just tried. Oh, <laughs> look. That done. That done. That done. That done. Look here, you don't feel kind of I don't feel a pop out thing. You don't feel kind of like you're a dampness nowhere. <laughs> no. You wait it, huh? I, I've been deep. to Niagara Falls before, oh, buddy. <laughs> At this point, I want a special hand for Texan Marcy Maynard on the drums and organ, please. That ends today's overview of American Tent Theater. Thanks a whole lot, you've been a great audience. Thank you.